Hey, I'm Rob from Producer Tech, and welcome to the tutorial for Machina's new Ableton Live template, available with the latest update to the controller editor. That allows comprehensive control of all of the main areas of Live with your Machina hardware. If you're new to the controller editor, then this is a software application that comes with all native instruments hardware, enabling you to use that hardware as a MIDI control surface for any other software or even hardware that you own. The Live template is really intuitive and fun to use, and in this movie, I'll show you all of its main features. First though, let's quickly go through the boring bit, the setup. As I said, the Live template comes with the latest update to the controller editor. So the first thing to do if wanting to use it is to download that update, which you can do by opening up the Service Center software that you can also find in your Native Instruments Applications folder. Once you've installed the latest version of the controller editor, which is currently 1.5.3, then you just need to boot it up and connect Machina to your computer to get going. Next thing is to place the new template files for Machina into Live's Remote Scripts folder, which you should do before booting up Live. You can find these files in a folder called Template Support Files, then Ableton Live 8, then Machina or Machina Mark II, depending on which version of the hardware you have. Then locate the folder to copy these files to, which is done on a Mac by control clicking the Ableton Live application and choosing Show Package Contents. Then navigating to Contents, App Resources, then MIDI Remote Scripts. The entire Machina or Machina Mark II folder can then be copied to this location. On a PC, the MIDI Remote Scripts folder can simply be found in the Resources folder in Live's Program folder. Now you can boot up Live, and then in Live's Preferences, Click on the MIDI tab, and in the control surface section at the top, choose your machine or hardware in the first column, and then the relevant input and output port alongside. In this case, it's the Machina Mark II virtual input and output. Now you're all set up and ready to go. Your hardware should now switch to the Live template and become a control surface for Live. If you're still finding the hardware is controlling the Machina software though, perhaps because you have the plugin loaded onto a track in Live. Then you can switch over to controlling Live by holding down Shift and pressing the Control button. Additionally, if the Live template hasn't come up when in controller mode for whatever reason, you can hold down Shift and then use the page up and down buttons until the template on the hardware screen says Ableton Live. Also, note that you don't need the controller editor software to be open to use Machina to control Live, so you can quit that if you like. Now let me give you a rundown of what the Live template can do. The default mode that loads up is Clip Mode, which allows you to launch clips in Session View using Machina's pads. You can see which 4x4 group of clips are currently selected by the rectangle in Live's grid, and can move this around using Machina's group switches which are coloured blue on the Mark II hardware here. So I can move up and down, or left and right, in groups of four. Or if I'd rather move in smaller amounts, I can hit the group A switch, which then changes to orange, after which I can shift the rectangle in single steps. As you can see, the pads show me where all my clips are, with unlit pads being empty slots and the pads change in colour when I launch clips, so I always know what's playing at a particular time. If I want to use the pads to launch scenes now, I just press the Scene button on Machina, after which the scenes are laid out chronologically, with Pad 1 launching Scene 1, Pad 2 launching Scene 2, and so on. Then, to switch back to launching individual clips, I press the Pattern button. Stopping clips can of course be done by hitting an empty slot in the grid. Or, when one isn't available, you can hold down the group H switch, and then hit the pad corresponding to that track. Or, to stop all clips, you can hit the Note Repeat button.
Mixer controls can be accessed using either the pads or the knobs and buttons at the top of the hardware. With the pads, you can press and hold certain buttons, which is a very quick and intuitive way to work. For instance, holding down mute and then pressing the pads, mutes and unmutes tracks. Holding down solo allows you to activate the solo switches. All of these mixer actions can also be done with the buttons above machiner screens, which have a different function depending on the page the template is currently on. There are eight pages in total, which also change the action of the knobs below the screens. Page one has the first four buttons stopping the clips on the first four tracks. And the second four record arming those tracks. Whilst the knobs below adjust their faders, and then they're panning. Page 2 doesn't split the knobs and buttons in this way, but has all eight controlling the same parameters on eight adjacent tracks. In this case, the track faders and record arm switches. Then, pages 3 and 4 are similar to 2, also controlling eight tracks, but this time it's the panning dials and mute switches and then send dials and solo switches. To play instruments in live, you can press the pad mode button, after which the pads become MIDI notes. As default, they're simply ascending chromatic notes. You can see that identical notes are coloured the same way, to make it easier for you to identify them. However, you're not limited to this MIDI note selection, and can in fact change the octave, the range of notes, the colours, and even the scale. This is done by holding down various buttons above the screen in page 5, and then using the left and right buttons, or main encoder. Let me give you an example. I've got a MIDI instrument on track 4 here, that I want to play. So, I'll first switch to pad mode, then record arm that track, which I'll do in this case by holding down the group D switch and hitting the pad for that track. Now, I want to play in the key of my song, which is E. The bass note is C right now, and I want to change it to E flat. So I'll hold down the bass note button and then rotate the encoder until the bass note is E flat. So move it up by three semitones. Now, I'll shift the pads up an octave with the buttons below the encoder. Now, I'll change the scale by holding down the scale button and choosing one of 25 different scale and interval options until I find something suitable. Then, I can even hit the fire button to start and stop recording a new loop into the selected free slot. The last main pad mode gives you even more options for controlling both the mixer and devices. This is accessed by pressing the navigate button, after which pads 5 to 8 choose what you want to do. Pad 5 enters volume mode where you choose the track you want to control with the green pads above, and then rotate the main encoder to adjust their volume. Pad 6 enters panning mode, which works the same way, where the upper pads choose the track, and the main encoder then adjusts the pan dial on that track. Pad 7 is for sends, with the upper pads choosing the track once again, but the pads below now choosing a particular send dial when more are available. And last but not least, pad 8 chooses device mode. And this is really extensive. Let me show you just how much it can do. 
Let's say I have my session playing and I want to adjust the filter on track 4. So what I'll do first is solo that track, so you can hear it more clearly. And now let's select that track, so I can see what devices I have on there, which I can do by holding down select and hitting the same pad. Now let's enter control mode by hitting the navigate button, and then device mode within that by pressing pad 8. Now supposing I want to adjust the filter on the track, then what I can do is use pad 2 to step through the devices till I get to auto filter. Then I can turn the filter on using the main encoder, as this is its default action. Then I can use the purple pads to choose the parameter I want to adjust. You can see the status bar at the bottom of live changing to show you which parameter is selected. So I can maybe bring the resonance up, then the filter frequency down, then increase the envelope amount. These parameters are also controllable using the knobs above, as you can see. And there are even included controls for a DJing setup, where holding down the duplicate button allows you to select where the tracks are on the left or right side of the crossfader. Then pushing and rotating the main encoder, adjust the Q level. And the first knob on page 7 controls the crossfader itself. As far as global controls go, in addition to the entire transport being controlled by the transport section of the hardware, as you'd expect, you have other commands such as undo and redo assigned to the buttons in the top corner as well as tap tempo and other useful settings. And remember again that you can switch to controlling your machina software at any point just by hitting shift and control. So you can simultaneously use the machina hardware as a powerful control surface for live in addition to a comprehensive groove production studio in its own right. To learn more about Machina, check out my Producer Tech Machina courses, currently hosted on music-courses.com.